always serving a fresh cup of daily inspiration. Deanna Hobbs. Today's inspiration is to let you know God is birthing purpose out of this. Welcome to your daily cup of inspiration podcast. My name is Deanna Hobbs. I'm founder of Empowering Everyday Women Ministries, where my team and I work diligently to fuel your faith every single day. I'm so happy to be able to provide encouragement for you Monday through Friday. It's available as a free resource. You can download these encouragements on iTunes. Google Play, Stitcher.com. You can even go over to YouTube and under my channel at Deanna Hobbs, hit subscribe and you can be notified whenever a podcast is uploaded there. You can also make your way over to DeannaHobbs.com and listen to the podcast there as well as other media outlets. I just want you to have access to these words from the Lord so they will bless you every single day. Before we get started, let's pray really quickly and ask the Lord to be with us. Dear Father, our God, we thank you for encouraging our hearts through your rich word. I pray that you would open up your wisdom and open up our understanding to receive what you have to impart to us. Fill us up today to overflowing in Jesus name. Amen. I love Buffalo, New York, where I live. For me, this is just home. Even with the harsh winters that bring piles of snow and treacherous driving conditions along with it, I still love this city. I never want to leave and live anywhere else. I can visit other places. I often travel for ministry and I do, but upstate New York is home for me. That's why about nine years ago, when God opened the door for my husband Kenya to advance his career with a great administrative position at a college in Philadelphia that forced us to re locate. As you might imagine, I was devastated. I was happy for Kenya, but sad that we had to leave home. You know, I was seven months pregnant with our fourth child. We were leaving everything familiar to go to an unknown place. And I was already hormonal and super emotional. So I was a wreck. I cried every single day for weeks. I was in a deep, dark space. But eventually, though, I never did feel at home there. I did accept the change. And I began praying for God to show me what he wanted for us there. Aside from Kenya's new job, I just sensed that there must have been a purpose for it. After I came out of that funk and got out of myself, I began to seek the Lord. And right there, in the midst of my sorrow over being away from home, your daily cup of inspiration was birthed. I said, God, yes. And I just began to write. Had I not been forced into that uncomfortable transition, your daily cup of inspiration, which has been named one of the top 100 blogs for Christian women, may have never seen the light of day. You might have never heard this podcast, which is an outgrowth of The Daily Cup. Books have come from The Daily Cup. Ministry opportunities to spread the love of Christ have come from The Daily Cup. Those rich blessings came out of tears and valleys, but God knew what he was doing. And he's so good that after a while, he released us to go back home. Kenya got a call from the mayor of Buffalo to work in his administration. And now I know, though I didn't like the transition, it wasn't about that job, Kenya. You had God had to pull me out of my comfort zone so he could thrust me into my destiny. Someone listening to me right now, God has you here so he can tell you you may not like it. And you may not understand why God has you where you are, but purpose is being birthed in your valley. I know it doesn't seem like it, but take it from me, a firsthand witness to what God will do. He has a plan, but you have to remain open. You have to be like clay in the hands of a potter and remain malleable. Malleable means that something can be molded and shaped. And so in order for us to be malleable, we have to remain submissive to God's will instead of stuck in our own way. Earlier today, I was reading the book of Jeremiah and the Lord led me to chapter 18. Here we find the prophet Jeremiah hearing from God and the Lord wanted Jeremiah to be in a specific location in order to receive this special message. So the Lord sent him to a potter shop where he found this potter working at his wheel with a lump of clay. And the Bible says the clay didn't turn out the way the potter wanted it to. So the potter crushed it back into a lump of clay and started over again. After Jeremiah Jeremiah saw this happen, it provided him some context for the word God wanted to give him. So the Lord said, this was the message. Oh, Israel, can I not do to you as this potter has done to this clay? 
As the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. And he explained a principle in a couple verses I'm about to share, which I want you to listen very closely to, because this is what the Lord wants you to get today. In verses seven through eight, God says, if I announce that a certain nation or kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down and destroyed, but then that nation renounces its evil ways, I will not destroy it as I had planned. Now, let's zone in on that because it shows us that the clay clay does have an impact on what the potter does. In verses 9 through 10, in this same 18th chapter of Jeremiah, God also said, and if I announce that I will plant and build up a certain nation or kingdom, but then that nation turns to evil and refuses to obey me, I will not bless it as I said I would. This is so important because it teaches us that what we do has an impact on what he does. God had Jeremiah warn the people of his intent to punish them for their wrongdoing. But the Lord wanted them to repent. Sadly, they refused. In verse 12, the people responded, don't waste your breath. We will continue to live as we want to, stubbornly following our own evil desires. They had some nerve, didn't they? And they missed out on their blessings because they weren't malleable. They were turned over into the hands of their enemies. They wanted what they wanted. They wanted their will, not God's will. And sometimes we can be that way. Now, maybe we aren't worshiping false idols like they were and completely turning away from God and being obstinate and stubborn as Israel and Judah were. If that is the case, though, you always have a chance to get it right and God is merciful to accept you. But sometimes our failure to be malleable is something else. We have our own ideas, our own approach, our own preferences, our own will for what we want for our career, for our relationship, for our business. Business, right? For our life. And we want to determine our own course of action based on our desires. But God is saying, if you will allow me to lead you, even if I lead you through a valley, even if I lead you to a city, even if I lead you to a position or away from a position, even if I steer you into a relationship or away from a relationship, even if it feels good or it feels bad, as long as you remain malleable and open to my plans, I will bless you. God is saying right now, I have so much in store for you. I'm going to exceed what you can imagine, but there has to be an upsetting of your plans before I can implement mine. God is talking to somebody who is kind of frustrated because your plans have been upset. Your timetable is off. You thought you'd be somewhere else and you wanted to do something else. And God is saying, nope, if you will release your own ideas, I will release my blessings. There's a harvest waiting for you. As long as you stay submitted, God is opening doors, making ways, destroying yokes, giving you provision, knocking down walls in your favor and doing exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power that's working in you, as Ephesians 3.20 reminds you. So right now, if you're in the valley, in a low place, in a hard place, and you don't get what God is doing, he wants you to know that if you stay in his will and stay on the potter's wheel, purpose will be birthed out of this valley. To remind you to trust God where you are, I'm stirring Jeremiah 29 and 11 in the Message Bible translation. I want you to listen to this. The latter half of that verse in this translation says, I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not to abandon you. Plans to give you the future you hope for. My, 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 as you drink down the contents of your cup, as long as you submit to God's will, like that clay and be malleable in his hands, eyes have not seen nor ears heard what God has planned for you. It is amazing. Now let's pray. God, I pray for this, my sister, this, my brother listening right now. They don't know exactly what your will is and they don't understand what you're doing, but you do, oh God, and thank you for assuring them of your plans to bring Bring them to an expected end. Help them to hope in you and remain submitted to your will so that you can mold and shape them into exactly what you would have them to be, which is a vessel of honor, blessed beyond measure and favored by you. And all these things we believe and thank you for in Jesus name. Amen. Your Daily Cup of Inspiration podcast has been brought to you by Empowering Everyday Women Ministries, where we help fuel your faith every day. For more information, log on to www.deannahobbs.com. 